Hey folks, welcome back. This is Joel, and in this series, we are talking about Aruba's ST brand solution. Now, uh, in this uh, series, we have already covered uh, uh, a few topics, right? We have done a quick overview of the solution. We have talked about how to bring the uh, lab topology up. Uh, we have also gotten the branch gateways up, and as well as the VPNCs, right? So, if you look at my topology here. Uh, this is what we have right and if I do a quick recap here what do we uh, so we've gotten the branch gateways up right uh, when we got the branch gateways up we we basically made sure that um, we configured uh, uh, I mean anything you configure on the gateway it's normally an SVI right so we configure all the SVIs which are needed all the uh, IP addresses are needed right so we put the wheel uh, uplink these are the uplink interfaces because they're connecting to the internet and MPLS transport so we have uh, put them in uh, access mode, right? So these interfaces are in access mode um, and uh, the LAN interface, this one is basically trunked, right? Um, and these are basically the VLANs on the LAN side for this particular gateway. Similarly, on the VPNC side, what we have done is uh, we have gotten the uh, VPNC up. So VPNC, we did not do uh, using the ZTP approach. We did it using static activate. Um, we, which means we manually bootstrapped um, configuration and made the VPNC talk to Aruba Central, right? Um, and uh, we did a similar approach here as well. We configured the uplinks over here, right? Put them in the right VLANs and this particular interface, the LAN interface was trunked and these are basically the, um, you know, um, these are going to be the subnets which are going to be um, uh, the, the, the subnets for which we have defined uh, 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 the SVIs, you know, on the VPNC, and these are the subnets on the data center side. Ultimately, what we intend to do is enable communication between the subnets on the branch and the subnets on the VPNC, right? So that's the configuration we have done, um, and we also have the same thing which we have done on the DC2 VPNC as well. You can go back and check the videos to kind of get more details on how we did all of that, right? So in this video, we will start by, um, you know, like I said, uh, what we are doing is we are trying to get the underlay up, right? So we'll put all the static routes which are needed, right, on all the devices, wherever it is needed, right? Um, because, um, you know, you need the underlay up because only if the underlay is up, uh, then what we can do is we can then enable what we call as tunnel orchestration, right? Using tunnel orchestration, what we can do is we can build those, uh, you know, tunnels between the branch gateway of this sort, right? Uh, from the branch gateway over the internet as well as over the MPLS, right? Something like this. So similarly, from here to this guy as well as over the uh, MPLS. So this is, these are basically the four tunnels which we intend to kind of create from the branch gateway um, as part of this whole video, okay? So uh, yeah, that's, that's mainly what we try to do. So let me just get on to our Aruba Central here. So this is the Aruba Central, right? Um, these are the three devices which are online right now, as expected, right? This is all good. Okay, so step number one is for us to create uh, static routes. Uh, I mean, we'll, we'll basically create a static route from BG Gateway for the MPLS uh, transport, right? We already have received a default gateway from the ISP because we, remember we have a DHCP configured here. So we should already have a default route which the BGW should have already received. But uh, since the um, since the MPLS router over here is not doing DHCP, what we have here is uh, we have uh, provided the BGW a static IP for the MPLS transport, right? So it will not currently have any default uh, route towards the MPLS. Ultimately, our goal is to have BGW um, with two, uh, you know, static routes or two default gateways to be specific, uh, which will point towards the in internet and MPLS to create more of a, um, you know, equal cost uh, uplinks, right? So that it can send traffic um, over e either of the traffic. Later, we will obviously create some control policies and data policies to decide which uh, uplink we have to use. We will do all that tinkering, but for now, at the default state, what I intend to have is the branch gateway should have two equal um, ECMP, right? Two equal cost uplinks, um, you know, from it, right? So just to, if you look at the routing table of this guy, if I go to BGW, right? As you see here, show IP route, you can see as of now, there's a default gateway, 192.168.100.1, which is pointed towards the internet. 
so we will change this and we will try to add one more default gateway right towards the MPLS perfect so we will go to Aruba central now we will try to do this as a group level configuration okay so we will go to the branch which is of interest for us and on the branch um, you know obviously we'll click on devices and let's just get rid of this config so on the config um, you know tab what we'll do is we'll go into advanced mode now right there is a section for routing so we'll go to routing and here IP routes right so there is a section for IP routes and then there is also a section for static default gateway right let's go with this so we will put plus and what's going to be the gateway 10.0.100.1 that's the default gateway of the MPLS router We'll change the cost from 1 to 10. Why? Because as you see here, we are getting a cost of 10 for the internet router. So we will change this one also to 10 so that we can do ECMP. Otherwise, you know, only the MPLS path will be preferred, right? The basic understanding of routing, right? Um, you know, only, only if two routes have the same cost, only then they appear in the routing table, right? Otherwise, uh, uh, the least cost will always be preferred. So only this route would show up. So that's why we're making it 10, right? I'm gonna hit the save over here so once this configuration has gone in so there you go it got saved let's check if uh, now we could probably go on to the router and run the same command let's maybe wait for a few seconds I guess okay so now if you see uh, show IP route on the BGW you can see that uh, we have 10.0.100.1 and we have 192.168 and both of them are ECMP, right? So we have successfully added a, a static default gateway uh, on the branch gateway. Perfect. Now let's try adding a static route for the VPNCs. So let's look at the topology again here. Okay, now we'll explore, explore a different type of route, which is static route. We tried the default gateway in the previous uh, section now we'll try the static routes right uh, if you look at the topology here right what's happening um, you know let's see if i can use the pen yeah so um, as of now if you look at any of this default uh, i mean if you look at any of the vpnc the default gateway is uh, through the internet even over here the default gateway is through the internet because that's how we have configured when we bootstrap the device what we'll do now is we'll put a static route you know right, to reach this uh, 10 0 um, you know in fact let's make it 10.0 right slash sub we'll make it into a slash 16 subnet right so uh, to reach uh, this particular subnet what we'll do is we'll put a static route on the vpnc towards the mpls router on both of them right in this direction so that's uh, one thing we'll do and then what we'll do is we'll go on to the branch gateway and then we'll put a similar static route to reach these subnets sorry not that one uh, let me get that yeah to basically reach uh, these subnets 10.1.00 and 10.2.00 right towards the um, towards the mpls circuit so we'll i just want to kind of explore how do we actually put a static routes right so that, that this is an exercise which will help us understand that okay so that being clear what we'll do is uh, where we are right now we are on the branch let's move on to our vpnc group so vpnc1 we are on the devices we are on the configuration we are already on the routing page perfect right so we are in the advanced mode already let me get rid of that okay so in the ip routes section right uh, we will basically hit the plus button and we'll put the destination here right so which is going to be 10 0 0 um, right dot 0 0 right instead of making it a slash 24 we'll make it into a slash 16 so that you know we can add further more routers in future um, right that way uh, i mean in our topology it doesn't make sense it can be slash 24 slash 16 right so yeah that's uh, good we'll keep this use forward router address uh, forwarding using router address as it is and next stop the next stop for the um, vpnc would be what uh, sorry we are making this on the um, uh, we are making this at the group level but uh, i think 
it should still be fine yeah i think it should because we just have only one device right so it should still be fine um so we are going to put the next stop as 10131.1 is that correct yes so this is the uh, interface over here 31.1 okay uh, cost cost is going to be 10 right let's look at the current routing table once just to understand so if you look at vpnc the current routing table is this one here uh, you know the current cost for the default gateway is one but doesn't matter we will uh, we'll put as 10 uh, I mean it doesn't matter if it's 10 or 1 but we'll keep it consistent because we have used um, um, 10 before right so that's good I guess um, so that's on one of the box let's try doing the same thing on the other box all we have to do is change from 1 to 2 we are already on the routing IP routes just click on plus right uh, the subnet remains the same gateway sorry the mask would be the slash uh, 16 the next stop this time it will be 10.2.31.1 correct because this is the IP address we are targeting here perfect and the cost is going to be 10. all right so that's good now while this is getting pushed we'll go on to the branch right we'll explore putting static routes on the branch as well so we'll go to the branch we will go to the devices um, you know and routing perfect IP routes so here we will put um, 10 dot 1 dot 0 0 right because that's the subnet right if you look at the subnets here it is 10 dot 1 dot 31 so we are going to go with 10 dot 1 dot 0 0 we can make this into either slash 24 or slash uh, 16 either of uh, those are fine we can make it actually into slash 16 I guess so yep so slash 16 and then uh, we will uh, use the next stop ip which is going to be 10.0.100.1 why because if you look at the bg gateway the ip we are targeting is this one this is going to be the next stop ethernet 1 slash 1 and that's nothing but 10.0.100.1 perfect cost is gonna go for 10. hit the save button right let's do the same thing for another subnet which is which is uh, the second subnet for the DC2, right? DC2's underlay is gonna be here. Um, and uh, let's put the uh, slash, uh, which is gonna be 255 and 10.0.100.1 is going to be the next stop. Cost of 10, we are good, hit the save button. Perfect. So that is getting saved. Now probably we can quickly have a look while this is getting saved. Probably look into VPNC1. Show IP route. Um, I don't see it yet. Let me check one sec. Okay. So a quick uh, clarification. You will not see the routes yet on VPNCs because remember we haven't yet um, configured uh, the um, we have, haven't yet configured the, the MPLS uplinks, right? So the next stops are not yet ready. So you will probably not find the routes yet showing up here. Whereas you can see, um, or wait, actually, oh, okay, my bad. Okay, uh, I think uh, we have configured, haven't we? Show this brief. Uh, oh yeah, we have configured, okay, great. So in that case, you can see here 10, the slash 16 route is showing up, whatever we configured. Even on VPNC2, maybe show IP route and there you go, right? It's showing up. Whereas on the branch gateway, you can see the two routes which we just now configured are showing up over here. Perfect. That kind of uh, makes us uh, very good with the static routes and static default gateway, right? We are good with both of those. The next is, let's explore how we add some kind of health checks to our WAN links, okay? So what uh, ST branch does is, um, or each of the ST branch edge device, right? It has the capability to send probes on each of the uplinks, right? To check if uh, those uplinks are alive or not. And you you have the capability to configure which, uh, what, what would be the URL or what would be the IP address you want to kind of use for this probing mechanism, right? So um, this is very useful or this is very important because this will prevent 
excuse me this will prevent uh, uh, the traffic right from being forwarded on an uplink which is probably down right and thereby uh, you know black holing uh, uh, the, because there are scenarios where your uplink might be up right the uplink uh, is up because it is connected to a switch but you know down the hop maybe one or two hops down the line you know the uplink might be or the the link might be down and since we have put static routes here there is a possibility that traffic might get you know always uh, um, black hole so there is a way to kind of continuously uh, you know frequently in fact uh, run health checks right on the links and that's what we are going to configure now okay so um, again coming to the branch group we are already on the branch group right uh, we can go to um, there's a section here called van right in the van you have a section called health check right so in the health check uh, as you see here there is an option so we can enable this so there you have enabled it now you can define what FQDN you want. So Aruba themselves have a FQDN called as uh, pqm.arubanetworks.com which you can use, right? For, I mean, you can technically use any FQDN which you need, but better to avoid using uh, Google's DNS server or something because they normally have some kind of throttling enabled so that, you know, people don't DDoS their services. So though your uplink might be up, you know the you might not be getting icmp replies from the other end right or you might not be getting the replies for any of the probes which your gateway might be sending and your gateway might incorrectly uh, categorize that uplink as down while actually the uplink is up it's just the problem with the endpoint so to solve that we are using this um, you know aruba networks um, uh, pqm right so that way we can be sure uh, of uh, it working as expected Okay, so uh, we are going to use the probe method as ping and we are going to enable that, hit the save button. Right, so that's getting saved. Let's give it a second. All right, so the next uh, two important steps are adding the uplinks for your branch gateways and for your uh, VPNCs. Right, so let's do that. Um, so coming to the branch gateways, where we'll go is we'll go to the, we are on the branch group already. Um, and uh, this is something which we'll have to do at the device level. So we will click on the list button and we will go to the device, right? And go to the device here again. And we are in the advanced uh, configuration already. Let's go to this van. And here um, you see in the uplink section, there's something called as round drop-in, right? So uh, you can technically change this to something like uplink utilization, right? Th these are basically load balancing mechanisms. So when you have multiple uplinks, uh, SD branch allows you or gives you a capability to select what type of algorithm you want. Round drop-in you already know, right? It's just, um, you know, sending packets, uh, uh, you know, in a round drop-in fashion, you send on one uplink and then the next flow you send on the other one and so on. But uh, one, the algorithm which is actually mostly favored, right, uh, or mostly deployed is the uplink utilization. This is an algorithm where the link um, is basically used based on how much it is being utilized. So if link one is overutilized, then link two will be used. If link two is overutilized, then link one will be used. So, um, you know, there is an active probing of the link and based on how much is the utilization, the traffic is forwarded on the lesser utilized uplink. Perfect. So that's the algorithm we are going to use um, and uh, what else do we do here now let's add the uplinks right because now we are getting into the whole creating the overlays and all of that so you need to explicitly define what your uplinks are right Def and you need to tell the HD branch device um, if this uplink is going to be an MPLS or an internet because that information will be used then by the orchestrator to uh, kind of create those tunnels remember we spoke about this the tunnels are going to be created from the um, MPLS um, uh, uplink of one device to the MPLS uplink of the other device and similarly the logic goes for the internet as well right so they have certain logics of that already built so that's why we need to accurately and correctly define these uplinks right so we are on VG gateway 1 and we are going to hit the plus button here um, we want to leave cancer okay so let's hit the save once because we just changed the load balancing mode Okay, so now we are going to hit the plus button, right? So it's already showing us the MPLS link type. 
let's give a name let's probably use AT&T as a dummy you know uh, let's uh, I mean let's assume that you know this link is provided by AT&T right and the interface ID we already know we are using 3000 for the VLAN um, you know which is uh, the MPLS VLAN uh, what else we need um, operation uh, state to be checked right that's good rest everything we can we don't really need to do anything we can hit the save button okay once this is done we can go with the next guy which is the other uplink which is going to be your internet so we're going to hit the plus button again this time select internet and let's assume that internet is given to us by verizon right the vlan would be 4094 remember that's the vlan which we have configured in the topology as well and operation state to be checked and hit the save button You can also define how much uh, bandwidth you want a particular link to be used. In our case, we have used 100, 100, but you can tinker with all of that if you need. So there are a lot of such options. You know, if you have some use cases where you want, say the MPLS link to never reach 100% bandwidth utilization, you want it to just use 50% of it. Yes, you can do it. So you can define it. Perfect. Let's do the similar stuff on our VPNC. So we will have to first go into the VPNC group then click on the list button then go into one of the vpnc which is the vpnc one right and we'll have to get into the advanced configuration yes we are in advanced let's go into van and in van you have uplink here here you're not gonna get um, option to select the load balancing that's only on the branch gateway so though there are such minor differences between vpnc and branch gateway that's why you need to use specific models right uh, to get the full features supported for that persona right perfect so on the MPLS uh, what we'll again continue using the same uh, provider we'll just call it as AT&T and uh, the interface ID was actually 3100 right the private IP uh, you see it gets auto filled here right uh, 10131.2 right because we have already configured this IP right uh, using the SUI so it's already populating it which is great um, you know all we have to do next is hit the save button once this is saved let's go on to the next uh, uplink on the vpnc1 which is going to be inet and let's call it uh, verizon the uh, vlan id is going to be 1090 which is correct and uh, you can see the private ip is already populated Right, 10.151.10 is already populated. Uh, public IP is important, right? So public IP is this is the concept which I was talking about, the the natting which we have done, right? So if you look at my natting here on DC1, you saw here 10.151.10 has been natted to 192.168.1.3, right? So I will have to provide that IP here 192.168.1.3, right? Because this way, you know, the tunnels will know that if I want to talk to 10.1.51.10, I will have to talk to this IP because it is getting inhibited out, right? So, um, um, can we learn? Yeah, so as you see in the latest code, this public IP is also learned using the stun service. Since we are using 8.x, I, be I believe the automatic learning is not happening, so we'll have to manually provide it. Perfect. Hit the save button here. Okay, so we should be good here, right? So we've got 1090, 3100, 168, and everything what we configured is looking good. Now we will have to do something similar on the uh, other device, which is the VPNC, which is there in DC2, right? Same process, go to list, and let's uh, click on the device, open up the device, go to device again, and... Uh, think it did not go let me just go and do it again device perfect now we are on the van we'll have to go to uplink again right i did not see the host name okay there you go host name is that perfect uplink so again on the uplink similar logic let's hit the plus button mpls and at and let's use vlan of 3200 ip is automatically populated hit the save button
perfect hit the next plus button here and uh, go ahead and uh, put the inet right verizon so we had used we have used vendor as verizon for I, uh, internet uh, uh, connectivity and at and for mpls okay so uh, the, uh, the the vlan is going to be 2090 ip address again we need to find the correct ip address what is the ip address it is going to be um, I think it's DC1, sorry, it is going to be DC2, right? I think we already captured it over here, 192, 2.3. .3. That's going to be our IP. I'm going to paste that. I've done all this extra work because I wanted to show you that you can do, you know, IPsec tunneling even when your branch gateway or VPNC is behind a uh, NAT device. So that's why we are doing this. Otherwise, we did not really have to demonstrate this, right? So let's go and hit the save button. Perfect. So we've got all the overlays, uh, sorry, we've got all the uplinks also set up. And we have clearly told the branch device which link is internet, which link is uh, MPLS, right? Perfect. Uh, so I'm happy with this. Now comes the most important part, which is just turning on the tunnel orchestration so that, uh, you know, we are basically um, telling uh, Aruba Central that, hey, look, um, you can go ahead and turn on the control plane um, um, you know so that basically the whole tunnel orchestration uh, so that you know um, you can then learn about my uplinks and then start creating those um, you know ipsec tunnels which are needed ultimately for the data to flow right the overlay basically right so tunnel orchestration is needed for that okay so do that where do we do we again go into the group let's go to our branch group right so on the branch group, uh, we will check, uh, we are on the advanced, we are already on the advanced, right? Um, and we will navigate to the VPN, there's a section called VPN here, okay? As you see here, there's something called STVAN overlay, perfect. So you can either do it in a manual way, which is, you know, you will create your own IPsec tunnels and all of that. But uh, in our case, we obviously don't want to do it in a manual way, so we will change this to orchestrated, right? and um, uh, enable the we'll have to enable the peering right so we will have to click on this and enable the peering right uh, do we need to do anything before that i think we are good so we will um, yeah we'll just enable the peering here enable orchestrator peering there we go it is running now right next is what we'll also do is we will create a, a preference. So right now we are doing this on the branch, right? So what we'll do is we'll make DC1 as the preferred branch for me, right? We'll make uh, DC2 as the second preference. So for that, what we'll do is here, you can see there's a section called hubs, right? So uh, DC preference, right? That's where you, you can basically, you can go and add your uh, preference. So I'm gonna say VPNC1, right? This is the group. Sorry, this is the group, and in that we are going to select the VPNC, right? Um, and uh, that's going to be, um, yeah, that's going to be, uh, we're going to hit the save button here. Similarly, we're going to add one more uh, for the second preference, right? We are going to select the second uh, hub group, and we are going to select the second VPNC and hit the save button. Perfect. So by doing this, what we are doing is uh, we are basically making sure that the branch will always choose DC1 as the prefer, uh, preferred uh, DC and DC2 as second. But how this really impacts is when the overlay is created, right? And the routes are shared, right? So if I probably go and check like this, right? If the routes are basically shared, if a same route, like for example here, you see we have a BGP peering between DC1 and DC2. Think of this as a disaster recovery, like a DC network, uh, DCN connectivity, right? Maybe dark fiber or whatever it is. We have connectivity between the two data centers. So as a result, you see the routes which are here, right? Which is the 10.2 routes. When they go on to DC1, right? They are going to be learned over here. And then via BGP, when it goes to the other side, right? Via BGP, it is going to be learned on the VPNC and from VPNC, it will use the OAP protocol, which is the OLA protocol to send the routes to the other side. So when this guy sees it, right, he's going to see the same routes coming from DC1 as well as he's going to also see the same routes coming from DC2, correct? 
because there is also B, there is similar BGP pairing and overlay and everything. So BG uh, BGW1 learns the same routes from both the DCs, correct? Now in this case, it will still prefer the routes which it is learning from VPNC1 than VPNC2, right? Why? Because when these routes are basically sent across the overlay, um, you know, the, the there will be an extra weight which is added for the routes coming directly from here. Why? Because of this preference. Because we have now put VPNC1 um, as the preference, right? Routes which are learned from VPNC1 will, will have a lower weight, right? Or will have a lower metric, my bad. As a result, you know, the routing protocols, um, you know, like for example, in case of BGP, you know, the routes will, I think, uh, show a better MET value, right? So the MET value will be better for the routes learned from DC1. As a result, branch will always prefer those routes. In case DC1 goes down, then it will use the DC2. That's the significance of uh, the DC preference. Now we'll have to do the same thing on, we have done this on the branch, we'll have to do the same thing on the VPNC. So we go to the VPNC group, um, we are on VPN again, perfect. Uh, we will again do the same process which is change this to orchestrated and hit the enable pairing. Here we don't have to uh, do, uh, we don't have to provide any preference because it is the VPNC, right? The preference part you have to do only on the spoke side which is the branch gateways. We'll repeat the same thing for the DC2, which is again VPN, come and select the, uh, we'll select the orchestrated here and hit the enable button. Perfect. Let's give it some time now. Let's give it few seconds for everything to come up and then we'll start doing some verification. And uh, here we go. We've got all the tunnels up, right? How did I come here? So you got to go to your group and uh, click on the device in our case the branch gateway go on to the van section right these are the two interfaces and um, you know those are the two uplinks and you can see tunnels here you can see all the four tunnels are up right and here you can clearly understand by looking at this uh, let me grab my pen you can see the branch gateway is using mpls to reach vpnc one's mpls Right. Similarly, branch gateway 1, MPLS, VPNC2, MPLS. Similarly, you have branch gateway 1, INET, VPNC1, INET, and uh, branch gateway 1, INET, VPNC2, INET. So you can see the four tunnels which we discussed earlier are showing up. All of them are up. Right Now, uh, there was actually a small, let's say, trick to get it up. For a minute, they did not come up. And let me actually show you what I did to fix it. Right, I had gotten a couple of my VLANs. Uh, incorrect. I don't know if if uh, I uh, if I put the numbers as incorrect or they just uh, it, it's a issue with central. But uh, I'll anyway let you know. These are the checks which you can do to make sure your tunnels also come up, right? So you can go to the branch gateway, right? I mean you can go to the VPNC, right? Do this check on both the VPNC. I'll show you for one of them. So you can create. Uh, you can click on uh, VPNC. Go to device. And here if you go to interface right so you see the interfaces here make sure that the uh, vlans are correct right so in my case you know this uh, for example the internet interface should have vlan of 1090 and the other guy the mpls should have 3100 right so same thing for the dc2 as well you should have i think 2090 and um, i think 3200 right so make sure that the vlans are correct once the vlans are correct right your tunnels are going to show up okay perfect all right so you can also actually see a lot of other details on the you know tunnels so if i again go back click on the sorry change this to branch click van tunnels and there you go those are the four tunnels right if you click on any of them you can see the information here right so you get information about uh, a lot of information in fact you can see currently since the tunnel is just up, it has not calculated, you know, all the information yet. It will take some time for it to kind of aggregate this information. But ultimately, you'll be able to see, you know, if the tunnel status is good, what is the usage, throughput and all of that, right, which is pretty useful. Um, I think there is also, a, yeah, you'll also see the MOS, which is performance score as well for the particular uplink 
for the particular tunnel my bad right so you get to see all of that but in my case right now i think none of them are showing up because you know the the interfaces were i mean the tunnels were down till this point right they just came up now so it will take some time for the metrics to be populated okay we can also check uh, cli let's go into the cli if you want to learn some troubleshooting steps you can go on to the cli and then run uh, show crypto ipsec the typical ipsec command right so you can see the four tunnels are showing up here correct the four tunnels are showing up um, you know these are the mpls tunnels and these are these two are the internet tunnels right um, then uh, you uh, the other important thing is uh, you might be curious is there phase one because ipsec has phase one and phase two is there phase one here i will uh, okay i will let you take a second over here to think it uh, before proceeding do you think there will be a phase one uh, the answer is no there won't be phase one as you see there is no isa camp why because you have a control plane in the middle right you have the tunnel orchestrator so the tunnel orchestrator does the job of phase one it it, it can exchange the keys which can it can uh, exchange the keys between the devices where the ipsec tunnels are going to be very similar to how we did it in cisco's sd1 as well we did not have phase one over there similar here as well you don't have phase one so that's why you don't see anything in isa camp the other command which you can check out is show ip oap right this is the uh, protocol which i was talking about right the overlay protocol uh, very similar to the omp protocol we had in st van viptala so you can check here that um, the show ip oap protocol should technically be connected uh, maybe missing st van topology configuration last disconnect yeah, sometimes that happens right um, when that happens i think most of the time the simplest way to get it up is just again i mean it happens in your evng uh, the simplest way would be to kind of um, reboot the device and it would come up right uh, similarly we could probably um, um, what else can we check here show ip oap tunnel i think that would be yeah so these were the tunnels which we earlier saw right that you can see here the oap tunnels um yeah i think that's uh, predominant and maybe you can also see there's another cli in my notes which says show crypto oto uh, which is again you know uh, gives you some crypto related uh, stuff right uh, so let's see if we can really get this show i oap up it's down currently let's check if it is up on the vpncs but uh, here also it looks like I mean it's the state is up but the channel shows as disconnect let's check again on this guy yeah currently it shows disconnect uh, missing overlay configuration maybe it is going to come up uh, later maybe in the next video we can probably double check it uh, but I have seen this in the past when you're doing a lab right uh, they do keep on going up and down but that's fine you can just reboot the uh, device and it should come up okay okay the other places where you can see the uh, control connections is um, if you go to network services you will actually see your you can click on tunnel over here right so uh, technically when you click on tunnel and if you look at your these are some of my old branches so old hubs they are showing up but if you click on your hub you can see the hub is over here and if you see below you can see the control connections showing up right um, and you've got uh, the various uplinks being shown up and all of that information is available here you can see one is up zero down so one control connection is up similarly for dc2 you can see the information here right sometimes it takes a little bit of time for this data to come up like for example for spokes i think it still shows zero branches so it sometimes takes a bit of time so don't worry uh, keep this running for some time so that you know um, you know the sdvan device has done its Com computation and then it will be able to show some of the data on central the last thing is let's uh, create uh, basically uh, sites right we have created groups but now we'll say create sites because sites are needed for from a monitoring perspective right so let's do that so let's go to again global right so we are on global let's go to overview right, uh, sorry uh, we are on global my bad so let's we are on global let's go to organization right 
right now you see there are basically zero sites let's click on that and uh, let's start creating sites right now right now all four devices are here so i'm going to scroll down and say create a new site and here what we'll do is um, we'll just give some site name right let's call it um you know north uh, not i mean i'm based out of bangalore so i'm going to say north bangalore site right um which would be um let's uh, put north bangalore as i don't know maybe the street address as Swaram city is going to be bangalore and country is going to be india right uh, postal is going to be um yeah i think uh, state is going to be karnataka and postal is i think uh, should be fine right let's add it so we need to provide this information so that it can show it on the geo map right let's similarly add one more site which is going to be the other data center which we are going to let's put it in south of bangalore right and uh, maybe i don't know maybe let's say uh search up for probably right um city is going to be bangalore country is india state is karnataka postal right and save it and we also need one more site for the branch right so the branch let's put it as central bangalore right and uh and maybe Put uh, here. This is gonna be Karnataka, and postal is gonna be. Okay, so we have created the sites. Now all we need to do is uh, move the devices to the respective sites. Like for example, the branch gateway would go inside the central. Do you want to move selected devices? Yes. Okay. So that is happening. Once that is done, let's come to this branch guy. And on the branch guy, sorry, I have to go back here. Let's click on all devices. Then we will take the DC one and put it on north of Bangalore. Do you want to move? Yes. And the last one is going to be the DC two, and that's going to go in south of Bangalore. Now move to yes. Perfect. So we have created the sites. We have moved the three devices to the respective sites. So ideally now, because we have done this, we should start seeing the sites over here, right? So when you, there you go. So we see the sites. So if you want to basically click on, uh, I mean, we can actually, now that I think of it, let's make it, uh, let's change the names, right? Otherwise. I think um, this, uh, let's call it North Bangalore DC. Update. Because you will not really get to know where the, so let's change that. And let's change this to South Bangalore DC. And the last one for Central Bangalore, let's just, um, let's just say our branch is actually a store, right? So there it goes, it's gonna update it. So, okay, the store is in MG Road and then the two data centers are in North and South Bangalore, right? So now if you go and check here, you can see it's getting reflected. I can click on the store and uh, ideally, do we get a topology here? Yeah, there you go, we have a topology, right? So right now it looks like, um, you know, maybe the couple of links are down but that's okay we'll once we reboot the device thing should come up but this is ideally where you can see the topology you can see the branch gateway you can see the inet you can see it's connected to mpls and right now it looks like the vpnc2 may be down or something i'll have to this happens sometimes you know the devices sometimes um, go down all you have to do is just reboot it and things will be safe but that's where you have to see your you know you can click on any of this link and you can get all the information like for example you can see the tunnels here you can see from this branch gateway you have two tunnels going to the vpns in fact i can see vpnc2 here i don't know why it's not showing up here so that happens sometimes you know sometimes it doesn't load properly 
so you can again maybe refresh it yeah there you go now you can see both the vpncs right so sometimes that happens um, so you can see the device and both the vpncs is showing up over here perfect um, we can also maybe go to like you can also now start seeing uh, like for example you can go to global and network health right in the network health dashboard you can see everything is green in color which is which means it's good right you can click here and get some information about each of the sites so the reason we create sites is because of this right it helps you to do all your monitoring now once you create sites then you can start visualizing it on the map right and then you can uh, get some information and things on it right so that's pretty cool let's see if this started showing up now let's go to network services okay still i don't see the don't see the brand showing up here it takes a bit of time so not to worry about it let's uh, keep at it um yeah i think uh, yeah, that's mainly all the things which i wanted to show you uh, and obviously after this recording we, i'll try to reboot the devices and try to get all the connections up again um, but ideally you know um, uh, this this is another important place where you can see all the tunnels and all the control plane tunnels right the control plane um, which is towards the central as well as the tunnels which are the ipsec tunnels that information can be seen actually over here um, you know in the tunnel so this is technically like the tunnel orchestrator whatever tunnel orchestrator is doing you should be able to see here for example we can see the control uh, channels control connections here for the dcs but we are not able to see it for spokes yet because you can see it still shows zero branches which is weird uh, you know it will still and maybe it takes a little more time for the data to be reflected but ideally uh, at any point of time you want to do some monitoring you can uh, kind of use this particular tab come on to the tunnel section and you can look at you don't have to log into the cli you can get that information from here perfect all right so just to recap let's go back what did we do right so uh, we basically started this video with um, uh, you know we already had branch gateways and vpncs up all we had to do was uh, start by we created a uh, you know we created a st uh, st default gateway on the branch we explored how to create default gateways then uh, we explored how to create static routes right we created static routes here on on both of these vpncs as well as on this guy right here we created static routes towards this subnet and on the branch gateway we created static routes towards this subnet right so once we created that then we also enabled those wan health checks right because we want to make sure that the wan link even if this link is up but what if this link is down right or maybe this link is down we don't want the traffic to be back hole so we created um, wan health checks so that you know the links are going to continuously monitor if the, i mean the branch gateway is going to continuously monitor and if a link is down you know traffic will not be sent on that uplink okay then uh, once we did all of that uh, we started with uh, adding the uplinks we added the uplinks we told the branch gateways which uplink is mapped to which transport is it mpls or internet we did it on all the sites and finally we enabled tunnel orchestration once we enabled tunnel orchestration we were able to successfully see that the branch gateway was forming a tunnel over internet right to this guy as well as over internet to this guy similarly uh, over mpls we also saw that uh, you know it was able to create a tunnel in this way as well as the fourth tunnel was in this direction so we were able to see all the four tunnels were formed and they were up um, and uh, we also saw that you can use central we can use cli as well as central to monitor these tunnels and finally we also ended up creating sites right so we created sites um, and uh, we were able to kind of um, uh, once we created the sites we saw that you know the, the 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 devices started showing up on the monitoring maps especially right um, and it becomes much easier for you to and you can also start seeing topology and all of that other pieces which are very much needed for monitoring perspective right so hope uh, that was uh, you know kind of useful uh, now is my pen working okay so hope uh, yeah that was kind of useful um, um, again do go back and check the videos which we have done on the introduction the videos which we did on set, getting up your branch gateways vpncs uh, so that you get a complete picture of whatever we have done here um, so uh, that concludes the fourth video and uh, you know do come back because in the next video we'll probably start playing around now that we have the tunnels in place 
we will start sending routes on these tunnels right we will start um, uh, i mean we uh, ultimate i mean we will start uh, tinkering with the control plane right we will start uh, um, advertising the routes right um, to the tunnel uh, to the route called orchestrator and uh, uh, you know we will basically establish uh, uh, connectivity uh, right between the subnets which we have right over the ipsec tunnels right the ipsec tunnels are just the data plane whatever we have done till now is we brought up the underlay then we brought up the um, you know data plane in the overlay using the ipsec tunnels now we are going to next go and tinker with the control plane in the overlay right so you will play around with maybe a bgp and stuff like that right and um, uh, we will uh, we will figure out how you can uh, finally establish connectivity between the subnets which are behind these edge devices okay so uh, thanks a lot for watching guys and uh, have a good one bye